Arsenal Champions League, my name is Nimsh and I'm here with Raven casting these games for you. We are um, having the last game of the day, that's Eco versus Hoy in Group B and one of them is going through to join Pavel in the top 8 and one of them is going to be eliminated. Yeah, so both these guys have uh, had some rough games early on. We saw uh, Eco play some pretty long drawn out games versus Pavel. Um, in the winners match, and then uh, Hoy having a bit of a nail biter series with RDU overall, but overall coming out on top, uh, finishing with that shame in there. But this is going to be Ecop's Patron Warrior versus Hoy's Secret Paladin, so with a good matchup. We've discussed Patron Warrior versus Paladin uh, a little bit this evening. Um, we did discuss it when they actually met in the first round. So <laughs> they are playing against each other again. Uh, they started in the first round with that exact matchup, but they went through the uh, through the group, and here they are again. Hoy has a chance, even though he lost versus Ecop, he has a chance to take this one. Yeah, and uh, these guys are going to know the uh, pretty much the ins and outs of each other's deck now. They both had opportunities to play against each other and watch the other matches as well. So uh, this will be really interesting how they line up. I mean, Ecop starting with his uh, warrior again, obviously on paper I think has the the favored matchup slightly, but uh, you know we've saw we've seen Hoy do some. Uh, Pretty good plays with his secret paladin so far. Yeah, absolutely, but he is missing turn three now. Uh, on the other hand, Ecop is not having a lot of follow up. He got that fireworks, which is good for him. Unstable Ghoul can deal with uh, possible master or other small minions, but having Dr. Boom and Grimash on turn two and three is not great. Where Hoy, even though he's missing turn three, he will have Shredder into Belcher and a chance to pick up uh, Mysterious Challenger. Yeah, I think Ahoy's just sat now wait, waiting up whether he wants to play this uh, Noble Sacrifice or not. Um, I think it's okay to play it. It sort of burns the weapon um, or the armor smith, one or the other. So either way, I think it's uh, pretty pretty reasonable. It protects just... the dude. Yeah, you got to keep that 1-1 one -one alive, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think the reason here is when else is he going to play this Noble Sacrifice? He has his turn 4 play locked in, he has his turn 5 play ready, so like otherwise this you know this secret's just sitting in his hand where it was very easy to just slide in on that turn 3 and just drop it there and soak up this fire war exit. Yeah, I agree. And then uh, from ECOP, just in stable goal to, 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 to do something on board, but then a simple Shredder will be, will be good enough, for now at least. Yeah, I mean the ghoul soaks up the uh, you know the, the token, but Shredder doesn't get too affected, and it's uh, well, I guess maybe you know Ecops would normally want to just uh, you know lock in the death bite next turn, um, but he does have the option of slam and run the ghoul in, to, and then uh, you know potentially slam the answer for the the thing that got drops from Shredder as well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but fireworks, pretty nice. Uh, he doesn't have the patrons yet. Fireworks, uh, fireworks is always good. <laughs> This minion is interesting. With the with the hero powers from Paladin, you will be able to, to attack with it. And he, Paladin does hero power a lot. Oh man, there is the... Hoy doesn't need to hero power when he has Belcher into Challenger and then he probably draws Boom into Tyrion. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this this minion is probably not going to be doing too much for a while. This is Secret Paladin, remember, Nymph? I do remember. <laughs> uh, the deck is pretty powerful. And uh, even though Patron on paper is favored with all the whirlwinds and Patrons and removal, you have Execute for Mistress Challenger, you have a passable Big Game Hunter, and uh, a board that's really hard to deal with. In reality, Raven, if you if you get a curve, it's like almost any deck will just lose. Yeah, I mean, so what you've got to look at it here is imagine if... Um, so Hoy, say he plays Belcher, right? And this is what Hoy's sat thinking about now. If he plays Belcher and then Ecop has Patron, this game's just over. Because, like, Mysterious Challenger will do little to nothing next turn because already you have at least two to four Patrons depending on the way the uh, the Ghoul decides to work um, in terms of how it's propped. But he, he already has, a, you know, a lot of, of Patrons and the game, I'm pretty sure, just ends. So what Hoy's doing now is playing around the Patron. Um, did he slightly misplay it there by... Oh, no, he had to hero power to kill the No, the he's girl. good, he's Plus. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing is uh, that... What, what am I doing thinking Hoy's going to misplay? <laughs> the, the, the... Silly on my end. <laughs> Well, well, everybody misplays at some point, but uh, I think just throwing their Belcher would Belcher would just die to the to the death spite. So you might want to hold on to that to, to Belcher. There, there was also an option to to consecrate, but uh, to consecrate the goal, but I don't think that was good. 
Yeah, and sometimes you can actually pull off a reasonable kill on uh, some patrons with Consecrate because normally there's like two, three, pa uh, two, three health patrons, a two health patron and a one health. So if you can, like, say, even just kill off one of the three health, then conk, you know, you you're only left with a, uh, you know, like uh, more manageable boards sometimes. But play not dropping the Belcher into the Death Bite is definitely a, a nice play there for playing. E cups sort of got a really awkward turn. Maybe without no knowing how he's played around this double slam. Yeah, yeah, because he can't even draw. Oh man, second Mistress Challenger. And we've seen one Noble Sacrifice, right? Yeah, so this means that um, it, it will bring some secrets, but the fact that it's a 6-6 a six -six instead of, you know, a Knife Juggler in this point is actually pretty important. Yeah, and the board doesn't even get cleared very well with this weapon anymore. Um, it might actually eat, you know, some other other cards from uh, from Ecom actually. Interesting what those secrets are actually. Because is Hoy not running Comp Spirit? Uh, we've seen uh, we've seen Avenge, Noble Sacrifice, and Competitive Spirit. So it's possible that that he maybe is running one of one Noble Sacrifice. Yeah, or potentially is. Have we seen a Redemption actually in Hoy's No, day? no Redemptions. So it might. Ah, be, okay. Yeah, it's, it's probably the, you're right. Second Noble yeah. Sacrifice and no Redemptions in the deck. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that's reasonable. But I think one of the benefits of dropping Redemption is a lot of the time Redemption is going on a 2-1, right? Because of the Noble Sacrifice interaction. Yeah. So maybe Hoy's thinking that's just not worth it and he can, you know, like, drop in one more card uh, instead of that Redemption. Actually, like, not playing Redemption, not playing Repentance, he might have more beefy minions inside. So something like Keepers, maybe Double double Belcher. Uh, what else can you play? Like, uh, oh, well... Oh, it's the thingy now. It's no Noble Sacrifice, right? Yep, it's one Noble Sacrifice he plays then, by the looks of things. Because the attack went through. Well, that's unfortunate for Ecop. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, Ecop's very unhappy. That's pretty grim. And just we say Hoy doesn't really do much in the facial expression area when playing, but he maybe couldn't quite help just cracking a smile then because that suddenly is a very very scary board. Wait, what, what happened there exactly? Why, why did uh, was Ecop unhappy so, that there was a redemption? I think because Ecop attacked in potentially expecting a second noble sacrifice. I think he want he expected the redemption on the two one. Okay. But the Noble Sacrifice wasn't there, and because he attacked and then killed the Mysterious Challenger first, then the Mysterious Challenger came back as a 6-1. <laughs> okay. Well, so, so this means this is uh, actually over. Yeah, I'll be uh, amazed and question Ecop to how he breaks the game if he can pull this one back now. Um, because I think there almost isn't a card in the game on 7 mana that can win him this. Well, like, if you just double execute, maybe? Possibly, but I'm still thinking how cool it, it, it is this that there was no sec uh, no second novel sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, there's some, it's the thing with the, the secret choices, isn't it? If everyone's getting very conditioned to place a certain, you know, X secrets index, like one one redemption, two noble sack, two avenge, one uh, comp spirit, and then potentially repentance. Um, you know, you, it's almost like everyone's just like, okay, so this is how many are there, this is how many have been used, this is how you play. And then when it doesn't happen, it can really throw people off. It's like when we saw a while back Life Coach using a uh, like sacred trial, testing that, because people just don't play around that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so it seems that Hoy is taking game number one again, winning with Paladin versus Patron, stealing that important match uh, from Ecop. But um, overall, we thought that Ecop is in a good position with regards to matchups, right? So Ecop brought this Patron Warrior, he brought Temple Mage and a Zoo, where Hoi brought Paladin, Druid, and Shaman. Yeah, I think um, one of the uh, yeah, I think uh, Ecop's lineup does pretty well overall. The only like weird thing is that it does pretty well versus Paladin, and then he just won with Paladin. So uh, <laughs> exactly. the, the, the Paladin now just isn't even a consideration. So now Ecop has to win. I mean, he does have Zoo and Tempo Mage for Druid. Uh, you know, hard, and then like he yeah, still has his patron, of course, which does pretty well versus the shaman. So I think he's just gonna uh, hopefully get the lineups he wants to to like pull this game back. And it is gonna be uh, Ecop's Zoo versus Holy's Druid. So again, Ecop would have struggled to get a bad matchup here because I think overall, as we said, the lineup here is pretty strong. 
Yeah, especially if you think about it. So Druid can be countered by Zoo, by Mage, and by Patron. So all three decks have a good matchup versus Druid. Uh, we've seen Ecop actually losing uh, versus Pavel with his Zoo to Druid, but overall he is positioning himself really well. So we'll see. Like again, good matchup for Ecop. Uh, let's see if he can he can take this one. Yeah, and Ecop actually getting that one drop for his Zoo, which is pretty nice. He'll turn one, turn two, especially when you turn to his Peddler. And um, the thing that Peddler does on turn two is like a secondary effect to a certain extent, is it guarantees you turn three, because at worst you can always tap and play whatever your one mana card is. So it just helps fill out that curve, like a, almost like a sort of backup guarantee that you can continue on. And it's also important because of cards like Gormok and... Uh like Argus as well, you can buff your minions, so you want to have minions as board as uh, at any time. And picking that Nerubin Egg was also good for him because he filled the curve. But then Hoy has a, a Keeper of the Grove to deal with the, uh, the Imp. Yeah, it's uh, one of the really good cards versus Zoo, especially when you can coin into it a little bit earlier there. Just remove the Imp there and it actually does pretty well versus the rest of the board. Um, the only good thing here for Ecop though is he does have Power Overwhelming on his Egg to go straight into the Keeper. So uh, he can get a pretty reasonable trade there and even after that the swipe isn't too terrible for, uh, for Ecop as like a, a response from Hoi. And Gormok is active. Gormok into Lothurb, into buffs. Seems pretty Into good. Death. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, yeah, this feels pretty good. There's, uh, the, mm -hmm. yeah. I think you, you want to play Gormok while you can, right? Yeah. Like Dark Knight Dwarf is plus two and a four four. Gormok's a plus four and a four four. So, um, I, I, and Gormok has a much uh, stricter condition for its damage. So I like just Gormok here while you can push the damage. And suddenly Hoy's under quite a lot of pressure. And as you said, the follow up from Lothar is going to be really strong. So swipe, swipe literally does nothing. Swipe. I say the follow up from Lothab. He could just Dark Iron Dwarf Power of Alarming depending on what, what the board looks like. So what do you do? Like uh, if you play the 2-4 and kill the 3-2, you, you take almost the same... I, I think Keeper is, is better than a swipe for sure. Uh, you take the 3-2 out, out of the board and you uh, build up a 2-4. You can kill the, the Void Caller as well with your Shade and then you invite Ecop to trade into your minions uh, yeah. and hope that you stole the game. If you go for like swipe does nothing. And yeah, I agree. Swipe because of that void caller. Like the swipe's so rough because it's not like he can swipe and then even in like a bad trade run the shade into one of the higher value minions. So I think uh, Keeper the Grove is actually the best play. Take two minions off the board and uh, and hope. Ecop doesn't have anything too heavy to uh, to punish this. With regards to uh, attacking the Void Core or, or not attacking a uh, Void Walker, um, this means that Hoy wants to get even more value with the the shade, and uh, attacking the Void Walker would only take one power of board, where he can use this shade a bit better next turn. Yeah, that's okay because um, I guess he uh, he's potentially got the swipe into hero power next turn. To, you know, put some, you know, remove some of the lesser minions and maybe kill off this Gormok and uh, and be able to, so he could like, next turn he could swipe, run the 2-4 into the 1-2 of the thing and then uh, hero power down the 2-2, for example. So this is setting up to for a reasonable turn and still uh, protecting the chain as well. So it's uh, basically over. Um, the only card that uh, Hoi can play this turn is uh, Azuric and it doesn't do anything. And then Ikov has uh, plus six damage, which means he has at least 12? No, wait, 17. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, it's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then now, like, the issue of the Void Collar not being dead is a huge problem because this Shade is still only running into a 1-3. Alright, so a very fast game and um, a fast win from Ecop with a very good matchup for him, but this is Far from over. We, uh, both players still have two decks. We're playing best of five conquest, so they need to win with uh, the other ones. Ecop still needs to bring that patron warrior, and Hoy needs to bring that that druid again. Yeah, I think this is um uh, at least for Ecop um a good win. The fact that it was just quick and let's be honest, relatively easy. You know, like Ecop just just steamrolled in with Zoo because the previous match Ecop was visibly frustrated um at, at the way that the the. Patron Warrior versus Secret Paladin went. So, you know, getting a, just a quick win and suddenly, like, 
erases the, the sort of negative feeling and maybe, you know, that might put him off his play a little bit. I just noticed a Pikachu behind Hoy. Oh yeah, nice. Nice. I'm surprised his, uh, his, his bird isn't with him. I normally watched him play Hearthstone. His bird called, funnily enough, called Pidgey. Oh. So uh, Hoy being a Pokemon fan, clearly. I, I've seen, I, I think I've seen it uh, a couple of times. He streams with it, right? Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, Hoy, Pokemon fan. Learn something new every day. Or at least confirm something. And a great um, player, a champion. Winning uh, by game House Cup, top 4 Dreamhack Winter. European Championships as well. Really good run. Yeah, and he's, um, I have no doubt this will be another big year for him as he, uh, the, the new format of uh, maybe you know reduced invites to more open tournaments. Hoy's proven uh, quite often, uh, such as in DreamHack Winter, that he can steamroll open tournaments pretty hard. And he's again playing his uh, favorite lineup almost. Like his, the, his main core lineup that brought him the, the biggest success was Paladin Druid and uh, what was the third deck he was playing? Hunter. Uh, what, in, in DreamHack? Um, no, even uh, before, like no. Affinities and uh, the Ah, uh, yeah, it was fun too, yeah. Yeah, now he, he had to swap it and, uh, to Shaman, which is uh, really similar when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are, are picking uh, Shaman as the sort of high damage, high prag road deck, and can't really blame him when we saw what Hoy did to uh, RDU in the previous match, so... This matchup, though, is definitely going to be a little bit rough for Hoy. Um, the Innovate out onto Shredders, okay, but when it just gets answered this hard, uh, you know, this is when Druid really starts to lose out. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, overall, a really good matchup for the Tempo Mage cards like Mirror Entity, uh, Flame Cannon, and uh, just simple minions. Uh, they, they bring enough value um, to, to set up it really well. But uh, the good news for, for Hoy is that he will be able to play around Mirror Entity with Keeper of the Grove. Just giving your opponent a 2-4 is fine. Because sometimes you're just locked with with Lotheb or Dr. Boom in your hand and you can't play it. Yeah, and um, definitely. And it's probably, you know, other than Dynasty's Aspirant, the best minion in the whole Druid deck that you can give to give to a mage Mirror Entity. This is a nice play from Hoy using that Savage Raw and clearing off the Scientist whilst keeping a minion of his own on the board. And 2-3 is pretty awkward. It'll either eat a Frostbolt or get left. And uh, Ecop's probably wanting to play the second Mad Scientist to get the uh, the other secret on board. Because we did see it was a duplicate as well. Yeah, he is playing one, so do you think he's going to get the Wrath oh. Guards? <laughs> oh my, imagine duplicate Wrath Guard. Oh man, it's possible! What is the secret? That, that's. I think that is actually duplicate, because... Th did he run, like, one counter spell? I mm, I thought well, I think we only saw one right, but I thought it was a mirror entity du duplicate. We're about to find out. Though. Yeah, if that's actually a duplicate, I think that's uh, well, that's a good minion at four free, but then taking damage to face while you play it is not the best. Yeah, I think. Do you think running the Crocken's worth right? Yeah, because I... you do, the, otherwise the Wrath Guard kills your minion with higher health. So uh, is it is, is Hoy weighing up whether he wants to give him two Wrath Guards? I think that's the, the question he's asking himself right now, because... Uh, did, is he thinking about Effigy, though? Like, Effigy is a possibility as well. Yeah, that's true. I think um, he's working out whether he can deal with Chain Wrath Guards. Because next turn, he, I suppose just playing through to the Claw is reasonable. But the Wrath Guards are actually good minions in themselves. The drawback is obviously the fact that they can um, they, they take dam the damage, pass it on to the hero as well. But they are, what, are they two mana four threes? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, you know, like, just suddenly following up this turn, if you killed that, two two mana four threes against just the keep the grow feels pretty rough. But on the other hand, was there a big difference between a two four and a two three? And uh, he did deal that damage to face, and he is racing here. So uh, a pretty good turn for Hoy where uh, Ecop didn't do much. He did clear the board, but a, a simple two two on board doesn't doesn't do a lot. Um, you have to consider a mirror entity though, because this mad scientist is going to bring one. And now Hoy has uh, two good minions in hand. Yeah, this is really weird as well, because like, what's going to be awkward is this seems to be duplicate. So you're going to duplicate, although Ecop's going to get the mirror entity, um, if he charged the scientist then, for example, just to get it off the board, then he's going to duplicate scientists, which is actually bad for Ecop. 
So do you gi give e cop? I think you can give e cop an Alger Drag, I guess. But then like he will have double, um, double spell damage, and yeah, uh, I... you might be forced to just try to go to face, and and finish e cop with a combo before he finishes you. But if you give him the the four four, he's in a good shape. If you go for the shade, you give e cop a free free shade that he can use as well. And also the Druid, until the Shade's revealed, the Druid has no real way to deal with it as well. Um, because there's no, like, powerful enough AoE to, to kill it even after a couple of turns. So, never mind later on. So, Ecop has the option to just leave the Shade if it was given to him. So he's still in a pretty reasonable position with the... Uh, either this Druid of the Claw trades into the 4-4, or if not, he has Flame Waker, uh, Mana Worm, Arcane Blast, which is pretty reasonable. He might consider... Um... Going for face with the living roots for free damage just to use the damage right now. Uh, I think the only way for him to win the game is to, to try to rush E cop and uh, he might. Yep, yeah, and that looks like the play. But he's going for the for the dudes instead. Um, that might punish him a bit because um, I, I remember one game he was actually off damage. He had uh, E cop at 18 and he wasn't able to finish it. And now because he didn't uh, go for face, uh, a savage or force of nature will not win it if the board is being cleared consistently yeah it's kind of rough and uh, the thing is with the 1-1s it always feels bad as well when you put in 1-1s on the board against tempo mage because this we can see obviously and you know you can't play around these cards all of the time but flame waker is so good at clearing this kind of board up the good part though is you can actually play the shade which uh, hopefully will survive and uh you can on on this turn you can hero power face for one and then on turn 8, you can hero power face um, for 1 as well. And uh, hopefully uh, put your opponent for 14. But uh, Hoy decides to go for the minions. And takes his chances that there are not enough spells in hand. Yeah, the, the shade even feels rough here because of the potential of the flame waker just killing it. Yeah. With the, uh, with the extra thing. So it's really rough. Like, with, like shade wrath feels okay with like hero power maybe. But then like when you just think if that's the only minion on the board, like they are, I'm in some major trouble. Even Arcane Intellect Fireball is going to be pretty reasonable. Well, Ecop knows that yeah, he wants to clear the board, and he gets a Flame Cannon, so that's uh, one of the tools to deal with the Shade. Uh, if he gets rid, if he gets rid of the of this um, Shredder here, but then he also needs to find a way to to kill Hoy before he drops to fourteen, and Hoy has a chance to combo him out. Uh, can you? Let me just clear the minions, attacking into the, shre uh, the Shredder, then uh, killing whatever drops off Shredder. Oh man, <laughs> that's an annoying minion to face. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit more awkward to clear up, which kind of sucks. Flame Cannon does go onto the uh, to the shade there. It pokes two for face and choosing to actually kill off the uh, kill off the Creeper, do a ping to clear off the 1-1 one -one as well. And, uh, I'm surprised he didn't actually just clear the board. I suppose this actually sets up... Um, does this set up lethal? It's close. Uh, he will have 7, 11, plus uh, 3, 14. Uh, really close, like if he gets um, a, a spell, th th there's a possibility of lethal. But uh, what, what Hoy has to do, he, he has to play the Shade of Nextramus and then kill the Flame Waker to protect his Shade and really hope for... Uh, force of nature, or was uh, will Druid of the Claw be lethal as well? So Druid of the Claw will be 6, then Shade will be uh, 5, 11, plus... Uh, hmm, not really. It's kind of a rough one. Emperor doesn't really do too much. I mean, it's... it's He's not even playing it, actually. He's just going to try and set up for this. Yeah, the thing is, like, he, he tried to uh, increase his chances to get Force of uh, force of Nature. And yeah. he hopes there is not enough damage to get lethal this turn. Uh, in fact, with Fireball for, for 7, it will, won't be enough. But if he gets enough hits to face, maybe. That's 6 damage from minions. He needs to uh, 7 for Fireball. It really depends hey. on Yeah. Ooh, our Cane Blast is still going to be decent to clear up the board, though. And seven plus uh plus Where are six. The things? one damage off. So this means that Hoy still has a chance. If he gets force of nature, he can win the game. <laughs> oh. That's that's so crazy. And what's Hoy gonna draw? That's Dr. Boom. 
So not really, not yet. And Ecop takes game number three. <laughs> that was uh, really stressful for him. Yeah, and uh, again, like the game was pretty close. So again, you know, a favored matchup for Ecop, but you know, the game was uh, by no means like a steamroll or anything like that. So. Uh, Pretty close one, but Ecop's now one win away, and he has his Patron Warrior to fall back on as his last deck. Yep, and uh, Patron Warrior has to win versus Shaman and Druid, and uh, I believe both matchups are pretty good for Ecop. Yeah, he's uh, probably feeling pretty reasonable, but then again, you know, Druid, you know, the Hall is definitely not out of it, right? He, um, both decks have the capability to, uh, to to kill Patron. It only takes Patron to have a bit of a rough draw, as we've seen so far tonight with some of the other players and, uh, and Ecop, where if you just don't get the nice sort of combos early on, it's kind of can be really hard to come back. There is a weapon for the Aspirin, though, so I would say it's an okay start for Ecop. Yeah, it's looking pretty reasonably good, even with the uh, the Dread Corsair as well. If he, uh, you know, has to like turn two, just arm a Dread Corsair up if he feels the need. All right, starting with a simple armor up. Uh, no reason to to play the weapon yet, and then there is the Aspirant that he will just clear with the weapon easily, and he can still play the Corsair as you mentioned. So that's super powerful, actually. Yeah, and even Ecop already having the Death Bite to follow up with is pretty huge. The Death Bite, pretty much like the, the key card. I'll be really interested to see what happens when Standard kicks in and Death Bite uh, is gone because it feels like just such a powerful card for Warrior that's super keen patron, but also just as important in Control Warrior and pretty much any Warrior deck, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a <laughs> That will be a very interesting time in the future. But for Hoi, uh, he is... In a, in a bad position, if he goes for a Shredder coin, he will not have a, a great play on turn 4, only the swipe, which is not the best. And then double force nature and saboteur is not something you want to have versus uh, warrior. You, you want to pressure the warrior with the big minions, with any minions. But now, <laughs> yeah, and even the, the problem is as well, the Shredder like almost certainly dies and the, um, the Corsair might actually live as well because you'd run the face in uh, to the first part of the Shredder. And then the Corsair trade with anything that comes out, if, if you know, if relevant. So, it's a uh, the Shredder just feels like a uh, too slow. But I suppose there's nothing else to do, is there? That's the problem. Well, uh, Hoy kind of has to do something. Absolutely, yeah. and there is still a chance you get something like Milhouse Mana Storm, which is a bit more tough to to deal with. Or um, Doomsayer. Doomsayer <laughs> to block the turn. Yeah, there is a lot of outcomes. And that's yeah, Doomsday really... can at least clear up the Corsair potentially, but we'll see what does come out. He takes four to the face, and it's a Murloc. Nice. So it's really good for Ecop here. And Hoy still doesn't have a turn four play, like a good one. You know, what yeah, about Ecop though? Like, he has the Death Spite. It's great. He, he can push, but he is missing draw, potentially. Um, doesn't have patrons as well. Yeah, I think the the positive thing with uh, Ecop, he, he has two death bites, so for now at least, just to buy some time, he can actually use death bites to remove the druid minions, which you know the, the weapon's really good at, right? Like you know, he, he, so much extra damage, and because he has slam and whirlwind as well, he can actually push that extra damage to kill something like a uh, you know, druid of the claw or Thoris, depending on uh, as and when they come down. Oh, it does manage to clear up just about, um, but again, just gives uh, Ecop the the board. And Ecop now maybe maybe got too many weapons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's got more axe into Death Bite, into Death Bite, one more axe. So maybe Ecop's like one game too many minions, one game too many weapons. Strike a balance, Ecop, and you'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> That's right. And like if if Ecop whiffs here, if he doesn't uh, draw any pressure, maybe Hoy will actually have enough time to get that Torison to work. And the unstable goal is not great. So do you really? Throw your whirlwind away and try to kill the shade as it uh, as it's young. Hmm, is it, it's definitely worth consideration because again, like I said, you, you have the second death bite and you have a ghoul as an additional whirlwind effect. And this time, yet yeah, you know he's not even drawn a patron, so it's not like he's going to patron anytime super soon. Um, but he has gone with this sort of more sort of uh, standard play of just playing the, the ghoul, playing it a bit safe and saving that weapon for a bit more damage because. Yet again, the four damage to face against the druid doesn't really do too much. You've got no minions to push lethal, so... Interesting. Hoi might actually not play Thorison here. Just swipe the ghoul, go face with the hero power and pass. 
because you deny um, the, the possible whirlwind for patrons. And then you're one of the chance to win the game is also to get maybe a second Savager and then Slam Torison. Um, and you know, double combo is 28. <laughs> Especially yeah, that's... if you keep the shade growing, just to keep the shade for the for the lethal. Yeah, more you can't really deal with a growing shade. Um, you know, chaining that many whirlwinds is, is very difficult, especially when your own uh, Hoy isn't presenting him any minions to actually attack. And uh, I think you're right, I think swipe might be reasonable, because a lot of the time, unless you can pull off as your Drake swipe and it's perfect against the patron board that's out, swipe doesn't normally do too much in this matchup. All right, how it goes for the Torison to have his turns a bit, um, a bit better. So this also makes sense. Like getting the combo reduced, uh, he might go for double combo if he gets an innervate, but he doesn't have to. Like even if he gets the second savager, he still will have a good way. And a swipe is going to deal some damage. Ecop is taking five here, just attacking the Torison, so dropping a bit lower. Yeah, Ecop's probably really happy to see the Sacralites. Like yes. Yeah. Something that will draw me more cards oh, at last. Battle Rage is drawing even more cards. Okay, so this is where Ecop can start to run away with this game. Even though the Thorison got good reductions onto the Force of Nature and the uh, Savage Raw, then like it might just get to the point where Hoy can't really afford to just, you know, combo and then play a Force of Nature because Ecop's going to be out of range of that damage, at least for now. And uh, the Shredder's going to be a good follow-up for the next turn to, again, just, just be able to just play a minion. Yeah, absolutely. But still, uh, Hoy has a lot of damage potential in his hand. And uh, <laughs> just trying to pull Ecop in range, right? That's that's what he has to do. Yeah, the uh, Zero Drake's reasonable. And uh, Lothab's going to be good to uh, lock out the potential for you know doing anything crazy patrons like further up. Because we imagine we're probably going to see the uh, Death Bite. Yeah, just, it's so clean to kill the Zero Drake. There's almost no reason not to. And, Grom is now in hand for Ecop, so he does have potential to actually push this game now. Yeah, he has some damage there, so mostly with... Uh, at the moment, how much is it on board? It's 9 plus, uh, plus 10, 19 damage. Uh, not in range yet. But for Hoi, he will be able to play Lothar to, blo uh, to block some spells. Or maybe even... Can mm -hmm. he somehow charge and swipe and put uh, Ecop in lethal range? Is there any way to do that here? Not really, not yet. So maybe just yeah, it's a, it feels a little bit risky, doesn't it? Yeah. So I, I think like I don't hate Lotha, just slamming Lotha, blocking the spells, and hope uh, in hope that Ecop actually goes for uh, for the Lotha. Unless you you swipe the minions, or maybe even swipe face play Lotha. Yeah, definitely. Hoy's definitely got a lot of options, um, and all the options they they all feel like. Okay, don't they? they? None of them feel like a, a clear choice here. So it looks like it is going to be Force of Nature. Face. But they choose to Savage Raw. So this is interesting. Uh, Hoy did his math and he sees that you will actually have 10 damage next turn easily. And now if Yikop cannot taunt or, or heal, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's what? There's 19 from Yikop. Uh, with the attack in, you know, the mini attack and the Grom. Uh, and even with like an inner rage, it's still not enough to kill Hoy. So this is actually a uh, pretty brutal. I mean, does he have to just whirlwind now or something? Does he, does he have to like double draw from the Acolyte just to try and get something that saves him here? Vitality told him from the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slam an attack. Yeah, so you, <laughs> so you slam your um, Shredder, you attack the Shredder, then you whirlwind, and you try to get something, right? Like, um, well, you will draw, and then obviously Vitality Totem is the, is the play. Something like an Anoyatron would be nice. <laughs> By the way, we're around. like, yeah, the play is definitely to get something insane out of Shredder. Uh, a lot of games come down to that, which is pretty scary, but we'll see what happens. We get one draw from the Acolyte. Uh, and it's going to be a patron again, too little, too little, too late maybe at this point. If he gets an unstable goal, yeah, he can still play it. And that's a whirlwind, so not really. He goes for the whirlwind though. Did he manage to do it? Okay, so if that's an annoyed shot. Oh, he, he was laughing, so what did he get? What did he get? 
Wait, they let the animations cut too. Yeah, he told him. Oh my god. Oh my god. But there is an interface, so that might be enough anyway. Eight. Oh my god. Thirteen. It's uh, is it one off? So. Hang on. You can go. <laughs> oh my god. Did this just happen? Like Vitality told him save. Really, Shredder? Really? You always hope for the best cards to get, and you've actually got it. I mean, I think Hoy's still okay, right? He can Lothib innovate Druid of the Claw Torn, which locks out um, any proc for Grum. Yeah, but then you you had a kill. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but then next turn, like, so what? It would take all four of the patrons to clear the board. Yeah. Maybe what you can keep one patron alive, but you can't really afford to face tank anything, right? Yeah, but and you, can, you have slams, right? Yeah, but with Lothab down. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so Lothab innovate Druid of the Claw and Taunt feels okay, because then he still he still has Force of Nature swipe, right? Yeah, and he might draw true. He might draw a Savage Draw. So th th there is potentially still has this, but Ecop definitely did uh, do the RNG thing and get the Vitality to him exactly when needed to avoid lethal. Oh, man. And now uh, he... How much damage is that without the Taunt? Oh, charge. Six, uh, 12... Um, plus seven? That's 19, so that's it. So yeah, I hope there's no Grom and no Activator there. But uh, on the back of the Vitality Totem, Eco takes the match, takes the game, yeah. and advances to the top eight, and Hoy is eliminated. Wow, I that think... finish, Raven. I uh, know, I think uh, come standard, there will be a reasonable sum of players that are happy that Shredder is no longer uh, played in the most common competitive format. Because I feel sorry for Hoy that it came down to a shredder deciding that match. But really good job for Ecop. He played quite well. So, uh, you know, just, a, just another good group set overall. Absolutely. So that's day B. And that was a really good day. We had Ecop and Pavel advancing to the top eight, uh, to, to, to the playoffs. And then we have Hoy and RDU eliminated. Uh, tomorrow we take a break. But on Thursday we're back with Group C. And then on Friday we have Group D. Uh, Ten thousand dollars prize pool, five thousand for the five thousand for the winner, and uh, we are doing good, man. Like it's a really nice tournament so far. Yeah, really nice to see. Um, the different styles in which the players bring lineups. I mean, Ecops uh, looks like his lineup is very focused towards you know certain decks he thinks the other players are going to bring, whereas some other players, such as Hoy, for example, that we've just seen as we discussed previously, is, is taking lineups he's super comfortable with, and they're also good decks. I mean, Hoy's played Secret Paladin pretty much since Mysterious Challenger came out. Um, he does like his Druid, a, another staple of his lineups most commonly, and did flick to Shaman, but you know overall pre pretty secure lineups for Hoy to take. Absolutely. And we still have a lot of good Carson in front of us. So that will be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Raven, for casting with me. Uh, always a pleasure. And uh, that would be that yes. would be it. So big shout out to our sponsors, G2A, Steel Series, Twitch. Any final words, Raven? And uh, no, just uh, same, just to echo what you said. A really good tournament so far. Really looking forward to the uh, next two groups that will continue Thursday and Friday this week. So uh, for everyone watching, be sure to check it out. All right. Thank you, guys. See you on Thursday.